good evening good evening everyone welcome to which video <laughs> i don't remember just a moment let me if i check it out i think we are looking at the 13th video just give me a moment i will just pause my recording for a moment Okay, I'm back. I was just worrying about which PPT I have already done. So I just looked into it. Well, okay. So we have so far completed 12 videos on MCQs of each of five questions. Okay, to uh, those who are new to this video series, my name is Ratankar Rao. I teach physics in an international school. And my hobby is to promote education or maybe to teach physics and uh, making videos. And um, yeah, this is all about me. And uh, now, this series of videos that you are observing now is a part of the homework portal. So, we're in uh, homeworks. Usually, what we do is we get, we give them a series of worksheets and uh, ask the students to do it. And sometimes we might find a time to correct, sometimes we may not. And as a result of it, of a class of 60 students, only a few of them look into the homework or do the homework, the rest of them don't do it. But here I have made it to a point. To my students or whoever is watching this, something like I just give five questions each day, which would maximum take only 10 minutes to solve it. Okay. Usually it should take only five minutes, but it can take 10 minutes also. And uh, if you do get it, it's well and fine. If you do not get it, keep it aside, think over it for the next complete one day. And next day evening by 3.30, you'll be getting the solutions for this worked out detail. So each and everyone would be able to look into it. Otherwise, what happens is we just give them a worksheet and we pass on the the come the what you call the options like A, B, C, D, and E. And uh, students do not know why it should be C, why it should be D. Then somebody got it by by flick. Okay, somebody got an answer C or D, and if that was the correct answer, immediately you think, oh, I have, anyway, I've got it. Okay, that that was the thing. And uh, okay, by fluke, somebody would have got it, and you do not know. Some of you might miss us why you got a correct answer. Okay, the moment you get something correct, we do not even look into it as why is it correct? Why can't I answer it in an incorrect way? Okay, so this is something which I am focusing on. So towards it, I think, okay, so this could be useful. Okay, so now let us begin with this for today without wasting my time. Let me share my screen. So as I said, today, oh my God, where is it? I hope I am visible. Right. Okay. Okay, so today is the 13th homework, which means so far we have already done 60 numericals. There's the 65th numerical, which we are doing, and the focus is mostly only on mechanics, and we will be doing the rest of them also shortly, rest of the chapters. And uh, for your information, you see, you can access all these videos either through YouTube, okay, which is scattered, I feel, and then so I made a website of my own. You can access this videos, homework with portal videos, and as well as the rest of the videos also from here. Or if you want only the homework portal videos, you can just go to this part, the, the sub URL here, and then you will be able to get this across. Okay, now let me proceed on to the first numerical. I am here, I'm just going to describe the questions. I'm not going to answer it over here, okay? So a sports car is accelerated from 0 to 100 km per hour in 3 seconds. What is the acceleration of the car? Very, very important. Very, very, very easiest question here. It's accelerated from 0 to 100 km. Initial distance, final distance is given per hour in 3 seconds. Per hour. The moment I say distance per hour, what do you get here? Think about it. And that too, this happens in 3 seconds. Right? Somewhere, the entire information is very clearly coded. Think about it like how to answer it and thereby you should find out the acceleration of the car. Remember, the acceleration of the car here is being asked in terms of the value of G. What is G? Acceleration due to gravity. Whatever number you get it across, you need to post it in the form of the value of G. Okay. Now, let me go on to the next question. A curl throws an object horizontally at time t equal to zero. Air resistance can be ignored. So, you throw the particle like this. At t equal to 0.5 seconds, the object travels horizontally a distance. The x meters, x distance, a distance x in meters, while it falls vertically to a distance y in meters. Why? What is the reason? Because the moment you throw the particle, what will happen? The particle will now start. The particle will be 
attracted by the ground, by the gravity. So it will now pull it like this. So the moment it pulls it like this, now the particle will go like this and slowly it will start deviating like this, right? Okay. So what is the initial velocity? Are you can't remember. Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Yeah. What is the initial velocity of the object and the vertical distance fallen at t equal to one second? Initial velocity of the object. Look at the question carefully. The object is thrown. Don't put it as zero. So initial velocity. There's some value here. Okay, you should calculate the vertical distance followed, fallen at t equal to one second. This question is nothing but your horizontal projectile motion. Okay, which I have already taught you. A particle is present on a cliff. You throw the particle. Now, the moment you throw it, it falls like this over here. And I asked you, what is the time taken for it to fall? What is the initial velocity? We have done all sorts of these questions. Okay, think about it and answer it carefully. I think this will be very easy. Only thing is that here we are not being provided with numbers while you are being given with the variables. Okay. Now let us move on to the next one. Right. An object of mass m is sliding down a ramp at constant speed. It is sliding down a ramp at constant speed. And then you see that doing the motion. Why is it not being visible? My cursor is not being seen. Without writing anything, I can't explain. Come on. Though I use a computer, I prefer writing things. Okay. So during the motion, it travels a distance x along the ramp. Right? It distance, it describes x. What does it say? Once again, let me read. I forgot this. The object of mass is sliding down the ramp at constant speed. Okay. Then during the motion, it travels a distance x along the ramp and falls through a vertical distance h downwards. The coefficient of dynamic friction between the ramp and the object is mu. Here it is mu is given. What is the total energy transfer to the thermal energy when the object travels a distance x? I had already told you how to calculate the thermal energy. The moment you come across thermal energy, what is it you need to do? You need to say, I am not going to say this. Okay. Think about it. Okay. So thermal energy is nothing but it is given. How do you get the thermal energy? When there is a work which is being done. Now who does the work here? Why do you get thermal energy here? I just give it a clue. I did this in the class also. What did I do? I just rubbed my hands. When I rub my hands, you get a thermal energy. Why do you get this? Right? So this is because of friction. Right? Now you think about it. I am not going to say anything beyond this. Okay. Now let me move on to the next one. A waiter carrying a tray is accelerating to the right as shown. There is an acceleration. What is the free body diagram and the forces acting on the tray? I already told you how to get the Free body diagram for the forces. Now, what are the forces acting on the object? Now, see here, the person is not flying, right? He's accelerating to the right. Why should this be given? Because a person is walking. I will just draw the ground here. Now, I hope you get the answer here, right? When I draw the ground, there is something very important. Think about it and then answer this. Right. And then next, next, next. A student measures the radius R of a circular plate to determine its area. Okay, so you have a circular plate. You have a circular plate. You are going to measure the, the circular plate. You will measure the area. The absolute uncertainty in R is delta R. What is the fractional uncertainty in the area of the plate? Very, very easy question. How do you answer this? What is fractional uncertainty? What is absolute uncertainty? Right? You know already that. So area, how do you relate it to a radius? If you know this, then the rest of them should be very easy. How do you relate the area to radius? You relate it as A is equal to pi R square. Now, I will not tell you the whole answer. Okay. Think about it and then finally get the answer for us. Okay. Fine. Oh my God. We have come to the end of this. Thank you, friends, for watching this video until the end. And let me, you, I will let you know these solutions by tomorrow. You can get back to me once again. And if you have any more questions, you can always write back to me. Some of you had been writing back of the often asking me for something like courses in physics. Of course, uh, definitely I will uh, do it, but uh, due to the availability of time and uh, got fixed and now joined a new school, so got busy with many things. And as a result of it, uh, uh, and also settling my home, so it is taking some time. In fact, I am recording these videos, even, even the later was like night, yesterday night, I recorded my video at around 12 p.m. Okay, because of several other works, I usually sometimes I come to home uh, by 9 30, 10 p.m. after having food and spending some quality time with home, family, and then I had to start with it. Usually, my work starts at 11 30, 12. 
so it takes some time and uh, i definitely promise you we will, we will definitely work it out on and uh, this year neat or je i may not be able to contribute okay there was a question here uh, can you give us something related to je or neat uh, i may not be able to contribute for this year because i have not yet recorded any videos and by the time i do it your neat exam will be over but i can promise you certainly that next year i can give you some quality problems develop some worksheets design some worksheets and put it across and help you out to solve the problems so ha i had one more query uh, the query i had was that okay how do we proceed further okay if i am studying from home uh, this is one rakesh agarwal as i observe here this is me how do i study if i am uh, studying from home okay for je or neat um the only thing that i that i refer to if you are not going for any coaching doesn't matter any everyone need not go for coaching for passing any of these exams okay so what i feel is in fact i did not go for any coaching not not did i pass in je okay that's a different story uh, okay so now you need not go for any coaching or anything you can directly work it out if you have a simple book which is called as hc verma okay problems and problems in physics the concepts in physics by hc verma there are two volumes okay try working out the problems of it you will be able to do most of the problems in je okay one of the bibles nothing else beyond this but my strict advice is that do not look for the solutions anywhere even on the web there are several groups the several people who put across the solutions do not look for it keep on trying if you do not get a solution for a problem which means that you have not got the concept appropriately okay read the concept once again read the chapter once again and then try to arrive it nobody is an expert even i am not an expert in physics okay to some extent i can also solve some problems sometimes i also do mistakes but my strict advice is that okay do not look back at the solutions you can get the answers try to get the answers okay but doesn't mean that you have to get the solutions thank you i'm just wasting your time i don't want to do it thank you friends for watching do like share and subscribe to my channel for more such updates thank you